The following program, copyrighted by the World Wide Broadcasting Network, is available for taping and rebroadcast by any AM, FM, shortwave, cable, or video outlet globally. This is an SRI, Spiritual Renaissance Institute, production. This is Vern Bedham Grimsley with the Spiritual Renaissance broadcast. In this program, I'm going to deal with how to use mental floss, not dental floss, but mental floss, how to remove the grungy grudges, angry attitudes, decaying feelings, and festering fragments of fear, fickleness, and frustration from your mind by praying this ancient prayer. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Prayer is sharing your inner life with God. You say, but sometimes I don't feel like it, emotionally or psychologically, temperamentally. What if I just don't feel like it? What do I do then? If you want to know how to pray and worship God, even if and when those moments come when you don't happen to feel like it psychologically, then heed the words of one Mortimer Snurd. Now, Mortimer Snurd was a ventriloquist's dummy. Some of you remember him. He was created by Edgar Bergen. And Mortimer once said to Edgar in the following exchange, Edgar said, Mortimer, how can you be so stupid? Mortimer replied, well, that's easy. I've got a fellow helping me. Then Bergen said, Mortimer, I can't believe that you're so stupid. And Mortimer Snurd replied, well, force yourself. And that, put very simply, is how to change your negative behavior patterns to positive ones. If everything else fails, then just force yourself. Make yourself pray and praise and worship God, regardless of whether emotionally at that moment you happen to feel like it or not. It will become then a spiritual habit. It will become your spiritual joy and your jubilation. For it is written, let everything that hath breath praise God. Thank God for your very life and existence, for the love of God for the Spirit of God indwelling your mind to lead and guide your steps. And then be certain to be around other people. When you're all alone by yourself, you're in bad company. Love and serve other people. That's at the heart of what Jesus said. Refuse to hold grudges. Refuse to nourish hatred against your fellow children of God. They're your brothers and your sisters. Jesus said to love your enemies. Pray for your enemies. Somebody says, well, that's a difficult order, praying for somebody who doesn't like you. Here's how I scrutinize the subject. You know, every time something good happens to one of your enemies, then your prayers have just been answered. Because if you pray for the people who don't like you, wish you ill, every day and every night of your life, pray for everybody else too, of course, but pray for everybody. Love God and love people. Those are the two great commandments. You shall love the Lord your God, said Jesus, with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Remember when Jesus was but a young lad, according to the historic biographies of him, he, quote, grew in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and man. Wisdom symbolizes the mental aspect. Stature refers to physical growth. In favor with God and man is a reference to spiritual growth in loving God and loving people. That is at the very heart of what Jesus of Nazareth came proclaiming. Let me use an example, an illustration. I used to wear glasses all the time for years, and people used to tell me that I would look better when I'm not wearing glasses, and I would say, no, it's the opposite. You look better when I'm not wearing glasses. But eventually, I had eye surgery, two operations with scalpels and stitches, one with laser beams. Now my vision is better than it was when I was a boy. I have 2010 vision, which is better, as you know, than 2020 vision. My eyesight is as good as that necessary to qualify to be an astronaut. Now, there's an old song. You've heard it. It says, I was blind, but now I see. Amazing grace. I was blind, but now I see. And it's true. It's true when you give your life to God. You have new insight in the presence and new vision of the future. You see things differently with a sense of spiritual vision. That you're here to learn to love. And the more you love, the better you're learning living. And the essential lesson of life, the love of God and the love of people. That's what life is all about. What is life? 
How would you answer that question? What is life? According to the Judeo-Christian teachings, life is but a passing shadow, a vanishing cloud, like grass after it is cut and begins to wither, like water spilled on the ground, which evaporates in the sunshine, like a flower fading into dust. Life is uncertain, but death is sure. Where are you going to spend eternity? God loves you. God has a will for your life. Beginning right here and right now, this very instant, and eternal life awaiting you if you will only seek after it. Material things dissolve, die, and decay. Only spiritual things are eternal. Live by truth and beauty and goodness and in love for God and love for others and give your life this very moment. Whatever your understanding of life may be, give your life anew, consecrate it, dedicate it to the living will of the living God who has a plan for this planet and a purpose for your existence. And that makes life make sense. But what about the problems, the difficulties? Here's how to deal with your own personal sins, failings, faults, and frustrations. Just tell God about them. Ask for God's transformative power to renew your mind and renew your soul and renew your very life. And then go on with your life. To put it more succinctly, more simply, whatever your problem is, admit it, quit it, and forget it. Confess to God, repent, move on to new undertakings and new exploits in the will of God. Don't focalize and obsess and be compulsive about the past. Look rather to the future. The past is gone. You cannot relive one single moment of that, but you can have a bright future centered in the will of the living God. True peace of soul comes not when you give up and say, Uncle, but when you give up and say, Father. When you give up in the sense of surrendering your life, turning your life and your will over to the living God, who is your heavenly Father. God is not some divine despot waiting to do you ill. God loves you with a love which will not let you go. And that love can and will totally transform your life. There's an ancient Irish Celtic blessing that goes, may those who love us love us, and those that don't love us, may God turn their hearts. And if he doesn't turn their hearts, may God turn their ankles so we'll know them by their limping when they come across our paths. But no, the ideal taught by this Jesus of Nazareth 2,000 years ago was that everybody loves everybody. Love even your enemies. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those, he said, who despitefully use you. The greatest decision of your life is the decision to turn your life and will over to God. There are seven great decisions which will determine your life. Where you're going to live, the amount of education you decide to get, what life work you undertake, who you marry, live, or work with, what you decide to do as a hobby or for fun, the state of your physical health and how well you maintain it, your personal relationship to God. These are the seven great issues of your life. Location, education, vocation, cohabitation, recreation, medication, and inspiration. Those seven decisions will determine the rest of your life. Give your life to God. Above all, dare to pray that line from the Lord's Prayer, thy will be done, meaning it is my will that your will be done, saying that to God and meaning it with your heart and soul. Give your life to the living God who gave you your life in the first place, and God will make all things new for you. God will make all things new. The first four words of the Bible are these, in the beginning, God. In the beginning, God created a universe of universes, glowing galaxies, star clusters, great spiral nebula, time and space. And God created you. And everything which has ever happened since the faintest dawn of light on this planet, from the first stirrings of life in the tide pools of time, through the ages of warfare and strife, from the discovery of fire and the invention of the wheel, to the building of the pyramids, from Socrates and Plato, the mighty Parthenon of Greece, the Colosseum of Rome, the birth of Christ, the Dark Ages, the medieval times, knights in shining armor, the Renaissance, Reformation, the Industrial Age, the Scientific Revolution, 
global electronic broadcasting, the atom bomb, nuclear power, the birth of rock and roll, walking on the moon, landing on Mars, everything which has ever happened in all of human history is but the prologue to this very moment now as you're listening to this broadcast somewhere on this planet. All that has ever taken place through all the ages is but the prelude to this ticking of the clock right now, this moment in time and space, this instant in eternity, this heartbeat, this second, which has never been before and which will never be again, this instant in which you, as never before in all of your life, can, if you will, whether for the first time or for the thousandth time, if you've failed that many times in the spiritual quest, you can say to God, it is my will that yours be done. I'm going to go anywhere, I'm willing to go anywhere, do anything and be anything you want me to go and do and be great God. Your future is beginning right here, right now, this very moment. For all that has ever happened through the eons of eternity has culminated in this moment of time right here, right now, this very moment. Eternity hangs in the balance. Dare to give your life back to the living and loving God who gave you your life in the first place. This is the time, this is the place, this is the hour, this is the moment, the choice, this instant is yours. And then write to me, will you, at the Spiritual Renaissance Institute. I really want to hear from you. Write to us, the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, Post Office Box 3080, 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644. I've written things on finding God, getting to know God, growing spiritually, things designed to help you in your spiritual growth. Write to us. I've also written seven principles of prayer. How do you pray? What does it accomplish? What is the process of praying? Is it telling God what to do? Is it demanding certain answers of the universe? Is it a fellowship, a friendship, a relationship? with a higher power, with your very creator, write for this free literature, no cost, charge, or obligation, finding God, getting to know God, growing spiritually, seven principles of prayer, two twin or companion pamphlets, the fatherhood of God, the brotherhood of man, life after death, all of these topics covered in the free literature when you write to us at the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, Post Office Box 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644 USA. For those of you listening in other countries around the world over our international satellite and shortwave network, let me spell the address. Post Office Box 3080, Oakhurst, O-A-K-H-U-R-S-T, California, C-A-L-I-F-O-R-N-I-A, 93644 USA. This is a non-sectarian, non-profit program proclaiming the dawning spiritual renaissance the fatherhood of God, the brotherhood of man, the worldwide family of God. And so for now, this is Vern Benham Grimsley saying, may God's will be done by you. Good day.